Speaking of interchangeable frets. Oh, cool. Wow. Oh, Rob, Rob. Awesome, right? <laughs> and there it is. How about tuning the... the uh, kind of just information or one of the simpler ones. Five is the limit of the ratios, number five. <laughs> Fretboards are available from Mark Rankin. This is the only banjo made like this, but there are about 30 guitars out there with magnetic interchangeable fretboards. That's right. That is so true. And yeah, I think that's very true. And what I said to him is he should say that to the camera and put it out in Austin. Because I think. Well, those magnetic rubber sheets. The That's more that you sit around and go, oh, better on better on the more there will be separation. Something like that. Yeah. It's still usable. Oh, yeah. Huh. What is microtonal? It means that you're paying attention to gradations of tone that are smaller than the standard semitone. I see. So there's a thing called the standard semitone. This right, you're looking at it. It's this fret right here. The first fret. Any fret, any distance of one fret is a semitone, and this new fretting takes into consideration the fine gradations of tone. I see. Pure tuning, it's called. This is for the string. For right. The fourth string needs the fret to be here, or the third string needs it to be down here. The second string needs it to be back up here, and the first string needs it to be back down there again. And this is a pure harmonic scale of, of just intonation. Of just intonation. That's so each of these is a different alphabet for music, in, in, for in a way. They, they create different tonal scales. Yes. For the standard fretboard is the piano scale. Yeah. It's called equal temperament, mm -hmm. and it's like the wonder bread of tunings. Will everyone be familiar with this? It's the familiar scale. Western scale. And in your explorations of music, uh, you found the, these other scales uh, also apply right. to this instrument. Right? Well, I, I okay. wanted to have this just intonation fretting on a banjo. Really? This is, so this is a banjo fret, huh? Wow. This goes to awesome. And I, and I sell, I sell a, a kit to adapt instruments to this system. Excellent. Put together by some guys in San Diego. John Chalmers Jr. is the main guy. John Chalmers. Chalmers. C H A L M E R S. He had a letter, but I don't remember it. I'm not online, so. Your brain's very good at making melodies out of yeah, chaotic that's noise. Right. Yes. Well, what's the melody making part of your brain? It's not really in the noise, it's your brain. That is that the ear hears about 20 octaves. From a, or at least 10, really? from 30 cycles right. per second up to over right. 16,000 or more well, sometimes. Really Whereas the eyes, the entire like spectrum one. is within one octave. That's right. It's very, very profound. Not a full spectrum instrument. Your eye only has three color detectors red, green, and blue. Yeah. But the intermixings of red, green, and blue. Every color that you can distinguish has a separate neuron in your in your visual cortex, and so 
what you're doing with synesthesia is it's like you, you have this whole array of neurons that respond to co visual colors. You've got a whole array of neurons that respond to sounds, yeah. and then there's textures and smells, all that kind of stuff. So how does so, one tr how would get one trigger the other? Oh no, all you're doing is just cross patching. Them. You see? It's like it's like a giant ARP synthesizer with all the patch cords. Think that could be done in software? I guess so yeah. because Sure can. I listen to people and, you know, like, sure that's, can. That's really I have no good. doubt at all. So it's a Everyone's question cool, of really of creating that software then and applying it. I'm sure you could meditate on it and do it if you wanted to. It would be a wonderful yogic power you could develop. <laughs> Ooh.